We have Matthew, Steve, Ella, David, and Jeff, who will be talking about brand marketing with NFTs, the next generation with engagement. Please give them a round of applause. So I guess we'll get started, because I know our countdown clock has started. So, um, you know, as the lovely MC just said, I'm David. I'm the CEO of Rosie Labs, and we are a collaborative of marketers that at 4 o'clock, I hope you all come to our happy hour, and you'll learn more about us. It is free rosé, so uh, that's all you need to know. <laughs> so I'm going to spend the rest of the time uh, with the panelists. So again, we changed the you know, format a little bit, so I'm going to act as a little bit of a moderator. So again, uh, we'll ask some questions specific to you know, NFTs and branding. Um, hopefully we'll have some time. I would love to also make it interactive if you have some questions from the audience towards the end. But again, short on time, so we're going to go fast. Uh, so again, I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves individually because I feel like uh, they'll do a lot better than us. You have three Americans and one Brit on the panel, so I made the boys promise to let her speak for 50% of the time. And so uh, with that being said, I'm going to actually start with Ella. Why don't you talk a little bit about yourself, what you do, and why you're here. Thank you so much, David. It's uh, lovely to be here. Um, my name is Ella. I'm also known as Bright Light Art on Twitter. Came into the space about a year ago as an artist, um, but since then I have branched out. I do um, spaces hosting and also work with projects as a marketing advisor. So thank you very much for the intro. Hi everyone, I'm Matt. I'm here as of two hours ago, fresh off the plane. So don't get too close because I might still have a little bit of plane aroma. But I, um, I'm the CMO and co-founder of a platform called Mint. We are a white label solution for brands and agencies and creators to build their owned and operated tokenized ecosystem. Everything from minting to selling, but also free distribution with one click to the token gated and token enabled experiences that we are now all talking about as utility and what that actually opens up as the next generation. So we're an onboarding solution for the next billion people we're kind of a web 2.5 platform. I have an agency background, so I'm wearing a blazer, but I'm web 3 with my shoes, so hence Boo. web 2.5. <laughs> I'm averaging it out. I'm also an agency guy, so I have no map for X questions. Ex-agency. I'm ex-agency. I pulled the ripcord. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jeff Milligan, so I am the vice president of customer sec success at Web3 Pro. Uh, we are also a white label marketplace solution. We have a suite of other products that um, kind of sit outside the NFT space. Um, one of the good, uh, one of the big value props of us is we create a marketplace under a brand's domain. So we create a subdomain um, to the to our brand's uh, actual website. So when buyers go and and brands launch NFT campaigns they feel comfortable and confident in going to that brand specific website. So uh, very nice to meet you all and, and looking forward to chatting. Uh, if anyone's interested of a rumble between two white label solutions on the same panel, four o'clock, Rosie Rose, we'll have it. <laughs> um, but again, we're here to talk about fan engagement and the next generation. So again, I'm gonna ask Matt the first question. So I'm curious, because again, that's something that I'm sure most of the folks in the audience what is the biggest barrier of actually NFTs and 3.0 actually becoming mass audience, something that we most marketers will use as a form of engagement? Uh, right now, it's actually education, to be very clear. And I know that's a term that we use a lot. I spend most of my time meeting with large CMOs from brands explaining what blockchain is, the difference between crypto, which, again, we kind of have nothing to do with, but metaverses and multiverses over here. There's a lot of distraction. There are a lot of decisions. There are things that people can be doing, but most of them are not actually right for brands. Their consumer isn't there. Their audiences are not yet taking those behaviors. So what we need to do is gradually bring them in through either reinforcing existing behaviors with new incentives or teaching new behaviors with existing incentives. That's the only really two options for established brands. Now we're talking about brands. We're not talking about new creators or artists for which there is a space here, but educating those about what the right decisions are is the biggest barrier. The tech is there. We have solved all of the barriers. to There are no more barriers to entry from a tech perspective. You don't need crypto. You don't even need to buy them anymore. We've removed that. So really, it's just a matter of getting to the point and then architecting strategies that deliver on the brand objectives. Quick follow-up to that. Have you seen any examples of where that's been successful? 
right, where you've seen a big brand that came to the market, educated properly, and has had a very successful fan engagement, customer engagement, <laughs> uh, brand engagement. You ask. You want me to answer? Okay, anyone sure. Anyone on the panel? If anyone on the panel knows, I'll answer a really quick one, example. and it's a plug for a project that we launched with Bud Light. Bud Light, working with the NFL, activated their partnership, where the collectible itself was really the least important part, and that's another big piece of the education. The collectible itself, the actual NFT, doesn't matter as much as it used to. You want it to be something people own, but it's really a token to unlock access to. The authentication technology is the key. So Bud Light created this can, fan can thing where every NFL team um, had its own can. You could pick and choose which game piece you wanted, but it opened up an NFL survivor pool. Everyone knows what survivor is if you're an NFL fan. You, you want to build your streak. Not everybody I know, so I'm already being American, but. NFL and Bud Light, there's a mass adoption happening. So I would love to ask Jeff, who kind of is you know, working in the bigger white label marketplaces with big brands using their own domain, have you seen the movement to mass adoption or to a tipping point, for lack of a marketing word, where it is starting to happen, or have you not seen it yet? Are we too early? Yeah, uh, great question, David. So uh, I work a lot with high-end luxury automotive, um, also in the sports space. Um, some of my clients, Lamborghini, Lotus Cars, uh, Ducati Motorcycles. When we originally have conversations with their leadership teams, they want to focus on the mass market. They, they don't just want to focus on those crypto natives. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of different characteristics that need to go along with that in terms of how you're going to structure an NFT campaign. Um, there's everything from price and quantity um, to the actual artwork and the strategy behind it, but long gone are the days in their eyes um, and what we're seeing in the market of just selling digital IP. These brands want to get into the space because of the engagement factor. Revenue as a secondary play, customer engagement being that first piece. And in order to do that, these big brands need to offer utility and they need to allow the customers to feel closer to the brand. So what can they do to allow these customers to feel closer, give them access, give them access to events and things like that? So um, I'll stop there. but. I have a follow-up question. Yeah. It's funny you bring up IP. Because you build on their own domain, and branding is so important, how important is it in your conversations with your clients that it's actually as simple as your marketplace can be on the brand's domain? Like, are you getting a lot of um, successful meetings because of that? Yeah, I, I think w one of the things that we've found that brands must have, it's an enterprise-grade solution that is extremely secure, it has AML policies, there's GDPR and compliance considerations. It's much different than working and offering a marketplace solution to an individual crypto project. So it's just a whole different animal working with the big brand. So, um, you know, they, it's, it's sometimes a challenge to initially get them on board, but I think, um, you know, going back to the mass market piece, they need something that's secure, scalable, um, and, you know, there's just so many other different factors that come into play from an engagement versus, uh, yeah, mass adoption. I'm going to switch kind of conversations. While engagement, I think one of my least favorite words in our community is discord and moderators and community and fan engagement in that world. And so I'm going to ask Ella, who is a very, uh, I would say famous host on Twitter Spaces, so please go follow her. She's been amazing. Uh, she is our resident, I think, artist and representing a community that on a branding side, may not have the most money, may not have the most relevancy. She doesn't work on the Lamborghinis and the Bud Lights, but she works on nonetheless just as important projects, I think, in the uh, uh, fan engagement. So again, my question to you know Ella would be, you know, cheat on Twitter Spaces, Discord, as a channel. Go. Well, what can I say? <laughs> Burn it with fire. Everyone hates Discord, right? Um, but people keep using it. Why is that? Um, for me, I think the real value in Discord is when people choose to join a Discord, they've made a choice. They've taken that step and you've got the foot in the door with them. That's the key thing because that, that's the beginning of their journey into your brand, into your fan base, into your community. But of course, Discord is a double-edged sword. Um, once you've got them there, you've got to do it right. And that's what I think small projects can sometimes make exactly the same mistakes as the big brands. I mean, we were just talking about this uh, before we came on stage, weren't we, guys? Um, it's, it's not a tool for broadcasting information. It's a tool to actually talk to people. 
I mean, once they're in there, if you can give them a reason to be there and to spend time there, they're talking to other people who've already taken that first step into engaging with your brand. Um, and that is an incredibly powerful thing. And then they kind of market to each other on your behalf. They're kind of doing your job for you if you're doing it right. I think Jeff wanted to come in on this as well, didn't you? Yeah, so you, you hit it uh, perfectly, Ella. So one of the biggest challenges that we see is convincing these big, these large brands to get into the Discord community. So a lot of them, Lamborghini, for example, they started with eSports. NFT was fairly new uh, over the last 12 months. So trying to convince them that the community building engagement is so important. They're a premier brand, right? Um, but just because they're Lamborghini, that is not going to sell collectible art. Um, they need to begin creating a community where fans and customers alike can chat with one another. Um, and again, it's all about feeling closer to the brand. Um, the the last they, thing though? I'll- Do they have to? I, I, I would posit that I think we may be post-community at this point. Not entirely, but we're moving there in that not every brand, not every entity needs a place for its consumers, fans, advocates to talk to each other. They're there to talk with the brand first and foremost. There are already platforms where people can talk with one another. The reason we use Discord now is because they were the first to create token-gated authentication, but arguably there are better ones coming. I mean, I, not that I'm a big defender of Meta, Facebook, Instagram, but they uh. announced today that they are creating a mechanism for distribution, and they already have reach. They already have a sophisticated chat functionality in groups. I'm not sure that that will supplant Discord, but I know that every other platform, I can tell you for a fact, from Snap to TikTok to, well, maybe not Twitter anymore, but they are building token-gated authentication as well. So we're not beholden to Discord, and I don't know that we need to be beholden to just engaging communication when the experiences can be exclusive content, experiences in real life and virtual participation. But the, I also believe that, you know, I agree on both sides, but I think from in terms of engagement, there are also community ways to do customer service management, CRM. I think Discord and Twitter has an opportunity to evolve as a platform where it's not just about community, not just about people, no offense, bitching about NFTs and trying to move the price and saying, you're a bunch, you're full of shit, which I see a lot on our Discord channels. But we have started using it at Rosie Labs, Discord as a channel for customer service to actually, you know, check in to figure out a CRM program, a customer success. So that's something that we've, sorry, my team's yelling at me to do this. And so we've started using it as more of a, a channel to kind of get feedback and to allow it to be customer, customer service. It's not about virtual chat. People are more comfortable there is what we've started using it as, um, as an organization. I mean, tokens are gonna be the next play in loyalty. This is ultimately where we are going as a CRM play, as a consumer relationship management solution. This is why Starbucks is moving its entire app onto the blockchain, but they're doing it gradually. They're communicating it effectively over time. They're building first and communicating second. This is the direction we're going where the token itself becomes less important as a collectible and more important as an access point, as a reward, and ultimately as a positive feedback loop for building lifetime loyalty value. Yeah, so and to add on to that, taking it to the next step, the CRM element. So the big brands are really, you know, they, th those that realize, for example, Lotus Cars, they truly, truly get it in the sense that it's no longer a financial play. There is an engagement play where, hey, maybe you sell $3 million in NFTs, but down the line from an engagement standpoint, you sell 20 million, 25 million worth of cars. It supports and informs their core business. So there's all of this data, especially working with uh, Web3 Pro as a marketplace, there's so much data that's collected. How can we capture that data and generate insights on behalf of the brand, these brands then know their customer. They can develop what we're calling a super user profile. And they really understand customer buying patterns, customer behaviors. So outside of loyalty and utility, there's a whole nother layer that is probably another session just on how this data can be leveraged to support a brand's core business. I mean, to that point, I think a big thing that what I'm hearing is, right, even the word token, the word engagement, the word, you know, fan, it's, you know, for brand marketing to move forward, I think we actually have to start getting consistency, right? I think what you all are saying is the same thing, ironically, and from a different point of view. 
Um, but shifting a little bit back to Twitter Spaces, and then we talked a lot about Discord. In terms of using it as an engagement tool, I think I mentioned earlier that um, we were hosting a couple that you know were very successful. We'd love to hear Twitter Spaces and the use of that in terms of engaging an audience or a community or some successes you've had on some of your projects. Yeah, sure. Um, Twitter Spaces, certainly right here, right now, who knows what platform we'll all be on in six months or a year's time, but Twitter Spaces right now, I believe, are just the place to be. Um, if you're a project or a brand, it, it's about accountability and it is expected in Web3 that you show up and you have one-to-one -one conversations with people. Um, I've seen examples of it done very, very well. I've seen examples of it done less well. Um, I think sometimes uh, brands, projects, even individuals, um, they see it just as another channel to, to broadcast. You know, they just want to talk about themselves. I mean, we all know this is Marketing 101, right? Um, you know, you have to give people what they want. And what a lot of people want is the opportunity to talk about themselves. So in Twitter spaces, if you're giving a platform to others, you're lifting them up, you're interacting with them, they start to feel positively about you. And that's where the magic happens. Um, I certainly just, what can I say? <laughs> I could just <laughs> listen to you all day without accent. I'm sorry. Oh, oh my goodness. I'll have to start <laughs> um, talking sense though or we'll lose the audience, right? <laughs> I'll get you in the podcast. <laughs> um, so in a couple of minutes we have left, I'm going to ask a question of each of you that's going to be the same. I feel like I'm the Miss Universe host. <laughs> but I think you have a lot of folks in the audience who are whether new 10 NFTs, a new brand, a new product, a B2B product, um, big brands are in the audience. What advice would you give to a group like this in terms of using NFTs for truly engagement, you know, in terms of your perspective of what your company does. And so give some advice to the folks who uh, are paying good money to see you guys speak. Yeah, I'll, t I'll take it first, David. So um, I think that ultimately uh, you need to develop, you can't look at this just three, six, month, nine months down the road. You really need to think and, and build a two to three year long-term strategy. Define your objectives up front understand your target customer segments as a company, and then develop a strategy that, um, that goes after each of those target customers, whether it's current customers, past customers, whether just, just fans that are trying to get closer to the brand. Develop initiatives around an NFT and Web3 strategy that, um, that are specifically directed at those target customer segments. It's all about the strategy. Ella. If you're gonna, well, if you're gonna come into Web3, spend some time actually listening to people who are already in Web3. Um, certainly mass adoption is necessary. It absolutely is necessary. If this is gonna break through, we need people to come in who do not care about the technology. But if you wanna plug into the audience that's already there, you, you need to actually talk to people and listen to people. It, it's marketing 101, isn't it? You know, go and find the people and listen to them, simple. Come on, Matt, bring it home. The marketing 101 consistency that you heard is right. It starts with insight, strategy, content creation, distribution, measurement, optimization. That was the same with radio, TV, initial video, social, and now Web 3.0. But I'm going to take a different approach. I'm going to give something that I haven't said yet ever, <laughs> which is stop selling NFTs. Damn. Wow. Don't sell them. They <laughs> should be drop. earned. They should be collected. They should be given as rewards. If you're a brand trying to sell an NFT, you lack already focus because you already have a product that you're trying to sell. You have a service you're trying to sell. So actually build this into a broader marketing investment strategy and the revenue will come. So I don't believe long term. I think 99% of NFTs, again, artists are different. There is a place for collectibles, but the long term strategy for brands needs to be finding out how you tokenize your relationship with the consumer in a way that is not transactional-based, but relationship-based. 